So Australia is pretty spoilt for choice when it comes to pythons. Out of 31 species or so that are found around the world, we've got about 14 of them, so almost half. But if there was one species of snake that I thought I would never be able to show you guys on the YouTube channel, it'd have to be this guy here. So stick around, guys. We're having a look at what has to be one of the most mysterious pythons in the country. <laughs> This video is brought to you by Snake Snap, a downloadable app for your phone where you can submit a photo of any snake found in the United States or even here in Australia and get that photo identified by a real life expert. On top of that, she's chock a block full of loads of interesting information. So for more info, check out snakesnap.com, find them on Facebook or download the app today. G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And this guy here is an Owen Pally Python. I never thought I'd be able to get my hands on one and show you one of these guys, but a friend of mine has been lucky enough well, kind enough to let me film with this guy and show you what has to be one of the coolest and most sought after snakes we have here in Australia. So the Owen Pally Python is native to a fairly small chunk of land in Western Arnhem land. And they basically live in sandstone escarpment sort of country. Because of this, it's a fairly remote area and they're actually been fairly new to science. They weren't discovered until 1977, which considering that these guys can get to five meters in length, it's a pretty amazing thought to think that that recently in history, we were still discovering animals of this size. It also shows just how remote that the environment that they live in is. On top of that, it was made especially hard to learn about these guys and to eventually bring them into captivity because their entire natural range is on traditionally owned land, land that's managed and maintained by the traditional owners in the Arnhem Land area. So people can't just go in there willy-nilly. You need permits to get into a lot of these places without collecting anything. So to collect some of these guys and bring them into captivity has been a major undertaking here in Australia. Now, as amazing and unique as these guys are, they are still a python. And the basic python things, of course, apply to these guys that apply to most of our other pythons in Australia. They're nocturnal and they're an ambush predator. We believe that these guys feed mostly on mammals and birds. And one of the reasons that was sort of a push or helped the push to bring these guys into captivity is so that we could start a backup population. Now, what people realised in the Arnhem Land area over the last several decades, while these guys haven't been in immediate danger, thanks to the arrival of things like cane toads and cats and other invasive species, a lot of the other animals, particularly their small mammals, have had a reduction of up to 90%. What does this have to do with snakes? Well, if you have much less mammals, eventually you're going to have less animals that eat small mammals. Now, this isn't gonna happen straight away, and this is where it does take some joining up of the dots. You see, if this girl here could grow to be 16 feet or five meters long, and suddenly her food source dries up, she's not gonna starve to death tomorrow. A big python can live 12 months or even more without a single feed. Now, they're not just gonna stop eating either. They're gonna swap and they're gonna try some other food if they can get their hands on it. But it was a big enough uh, reason to push this idea to bring some of these into captivity so that for the rest of time, we will have a genetic backup population of a really amazing species of snake. Besides the mysterious place these guys come from, their recent discovery and their rarity in captivity, one of the most interesting things about these guys has to be the fact that they actually change color. During the day, they're a fairly sort of drab brown, but at nighttime, these guys turn almost silver. It's really unique. There's a handful of other pythons that have some color change, but these guys, it looks amazing. It's really cool to see. On top of that, they're a really long snake. While they can grow five meters long, you couldn't compare them to other five meter snakes that people overseas might be familiar with, like reticulated pythons and Burmese pythons. These guys are basically the python answer to a tree snake. Very long, very slender, able to move through this environment, the rocky escarpments that they live in, with really good ease. Despite the fact that so many people are interested in these snakes and that we've now got them in captivity and that there's been some concern about the mammal species in their area, we still don't know too much about them. We estimate, or the Northern Territory Parks and Wildlife Service, I should say, they estimate that they numbered about 10,000. Now, it sounds like a lot, but in the scheme of animals for an entire population, imagine if there was 10,000 people. It wouldn't be very many. So it means that these guys are now classified as a vulnerable species. The other reason for that is because they're in a fairly small specific range, if we have something happen in this area, they're not found in other places. Because they live in this escarpment country, they're not going to pass a thousand kilometers of open country to get to the next escarpment. So these guys have a niche environment and basically a large single population in that area. And that is why they're classified as a vulnerable species. So another really interesting thing about these guys is the whole story about how they came into captivity. Like I said, there was a lot of concerns about them not having a backup population, them living in a specific environment, being subjected to threats, and uh, because of the mammals disappearing in their area, we decided to bring them into captivity. But the push happened 
mostly because of one particular reptile keeper, Gavin Bedford, who's a specialist in pythons, and he worked alongside with the traditional owners. It was actually a really unique uh, sort of program, I suppose. The traditional owners were involved, it was with their blessing, and they actually had a part ownership of all the animals that came into captivity. Those animals were then bred in captivity, and this guy here and every other Owen Pally python in captivity today is a descendant of the six individuals that Gavin Bedford brought into captivity. What's particularly interesting and unique around the whole world as far as I can find is apparently a part of the agreement with these traditional owners is once they're at sufficient numbers in captivity, those adult snakes are returned to the place they were caught to the square meter. They're gonna go back to country in accordance with the, the agreement with the Aboriginal owners. So it's really unique and it means that we've got these guys in captivity now. Hopefully one day they're in enough numbers that people can enjoy them. They might be at a facility near you or people might be able to, you might see more private people keeping them. They're a really cool snake. But most importantly, it means that we keep this agreement going with the traditional owners. They've had a benefit and there's been an incentive for this all to take place. It's a really amazing example of a sustainable use of a wild animal. So when all things are said and done, I'm just plain stoked to be able to film with this snake. Like I said, I didn't think I'd ever get a chance. So I'm also glad that you guys have got a chance to have a look at this guy, maybe learn a couple of facts and see a snake that most Australians don't even know about, but it's an absolute icon. It's a pretty cool animal. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you've learned a couple of things. And if you haven't already, please take the time to subscribe to our YouTube channel or like us on Facebook. And if you want to help us get out and about, visit more facilities and show you animals like this that I simply will never be able to keep at home, check us out on Patreon. It's those contributions that have helped get us here to Adelaide to have a look at these animals. And hopefully we can make more trips like this in the future. Between now and then, I'll see you next week. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Be nice to wildlife. Have a good one and take care.